guys, it's Janice from Ozark Family Homestead, and today Sarah and I are going to take you around the property, our homestead, and show you what is growing. So we will go through the orchards, we will go through the gardens, we will look at the berry patches, and see where things are at the end of June. So here we go. All right, these pots here in front of the house, I don't think much has changed in here, have they, Sarah? Nope. No, pretty much the same. A uh, few things may have gone more to seed. We've got, oh look, in the doghouse. I don't know if you can see. I got a hen sitting in the doghouse. She's trying to lay an egg in there. So we're gonna leave her alone. But if you go back and look at the video from May, you'll see these are pretty much the same. There's some onions growing in there. Uh, this is some arugula growing here. The radishes, this is what's going to seed. These little seed pods here are from the radishes. Uh, more onions over here. Lots of green onion tops. This one has some lettuce greens in it, which are still looking pretty. There's just not a whole bunch of them there, but mixed in with some onions. And over here, next to Lady. Hi, Lady Dog. Lots more radishes going to seed over here. And there's a little bit, what, of Swiss chard in here, Sarah? Yes. With the red stems mm -hmm. down in there. But not too much up here anymore. It's more shaded in this area. So we will move on, I think, to the herb garden next. All right, we're gonna head over to the herb garden. These two pots right here have our mint in it here. Oh, in the shadow. Let me see. Can you guys see in there? It looks like a shadow for me. So we've got some peppermint here in this one. And some spearmint in this one over here. And then at the herb garden, it's so dry. This is where I have oregano growing. All these that are flowering there with the uh, white flowers on top are oregano. And then I have a patch of sage right here it's so pretty. and it smells so good so the oregano will typically take over the entire rock wall to about that corner right there it's too shaded on this side with the lilac bushes but typically all through here will be oregano and it is so dry we're having to water so much that even the oregano is suffering and that says a lot so now we will move over to one of the orchards and start looking at some of the fruit trees. Okay, now we are out here in the old orchard. And if you've watched our tours from previous months, you'll know this is the original orchard in the property. The original homeowner uh, planted these fruit trees. There are apple and pear trees here, but the orchard didn't do well. So he planted a second orchard later on. So I'll show you, it looks like we're going to have a good pear crop this year. So far, things are looking good. Those little pears are growing out well. There's so many. There are so many of them. Now our apple trees, we lost one this year. You can see that one over there. But this other apple tree is doing pretty good. And we do have other apple trees on the property too. But you can see the small little apples growing all over this tree. We will need to replace the one that died. That'll be a next spring project. And the other pear tree here. Oh, yep, there are some pears on it also. So. It's doing good. Looking forward to our pears. We have delicious pears. I think these are bigger than the other ones. This tree's doing better than the other. Look at that. Yep, doing good. Okay, we'll head on down towards the new orchard now. We have one small little fig tree growing right in there. We need to get it a buddy, though, at some point. Well, Sarah and I stopped here. There's a whole bunch of sumac growing along the fence row. And I don't know if you can see, there's, oh, there they go. There's honeybees all over. Oh, I don't know if that shows up on there. They're just all on the fence row. All along the 
little flower heads here on the sumac. That makes me happy. Okay, here at the beginning of the new orchard, we have three pawpaw trees. And I do have some comfrey down here at the base of this pawpaw tree. And we are having to water these trees quite often now because we are just getting no rain at all. Okay, let's move on into the new orchard now. Okay, Sarah is over here at the asparagus patch. At this point in the year, we are finished harvesting asparagus and all of these big tall ferns that you see throughout here are the asparagus that is now going to seed for next year. So we are not gonna touch this we are just gonna to try to keep some straw on it and keep it weeded as best we can. And we'll put it to bed in the winter time. All right, now we're down here in the new orchard and we do have apple trees down here in the new orchard. I do wanna point out, if you notice the leaves, all these speckles on the leaves and these spots on the apples, every year we battle cedar apple rust. And that's because we have cedar trees all around us and they are an enemy to apple trees. So this tree will produce apples every year and they taste good, but they are not gonna be pretty. So that's what we're dealing with down here in the new orchard. And then we have our grape vines here as well. And I don't see any grapes on the back. Oh, okay. Well, there are a little bit on the back of this one. Yeah, I know there's more down on this other one. We got clusters. This yeah, one. this one is doing very well. So this is where our grape crop is right now. We don't have a whole lot of grape vines. Just a little bit. And the birds are trouble too as well. Okay, we'll go look at the peach trees next. Okay, here's another apple tree at this end of the new orchard. I think, Sarah, you said this was our first year harvesting off yeah. this one, right? Okay. And our pitiful peach trees. There will be no peaches this year. We don't even have beginning fruits or anything. So, no peaches. Okay, Sarah, you wanted to show them some May Pops, right? Yep. So, in our last um, homestead tour video, um, we showed you guys May Pops, and uh, several of, of you commented saying that you didn't really know what a May Pop was. So I have found a May Pop vine here with a very good, um, I guess... Example? Yes. Of <laughs> the kind of the growth of a May Pop here. I mean, and it's perfect. You start out with your bud, which gets fatter and fatter and then it blooms into this gorgeous beauty look at that and then it dies and it withers and you get this little guy who gets bigger and you have to wait for a couple more weeks or a month or two months or three months for it to get all big and round probably oh maybe about that big mm -hmm. yep. and then it's the, good and ripe and then the deer try to come and eat it that yes. is super cool, Sarah, that it is just right in order. Little, bigger, bigger, flower, dying, dying, oh, fruit, bigger fruit. That's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> All right, moving on to the next thing. Okay, this right here is a persimmon tree, and we have several on the property, but this is the one that's closest to the house. So this is the one my children scavenge under every fall. And I'm going to show you the little bitty baby persimmons growing up there. Now they're green green and you would not want to eat them now. They need to turn a peachy orange color and get smushy and disgusting looking. And then they're perfect to eat. <laughs> so this is what uh, baby persimmons look like. Okay, mixed in here amongst the wild lettuce plants, we have some of our thornless blackberries. And you can see they're plumping up some. They're struggling too with not having any rain. So we're watering, we're doing what we can, but uh, it's pretty rough out here right now, guys. 
we'll head on down to the next thing. Here's my sad little raspberries. I have, I think it's just one plant here. Absolutely no berries. I do have some smaller little spots right here. There's another small one down there. Um, this here, and then it does move over. This right here going to the other side of the fence. That's raspberry as well, but not a single berry to harvest this year. So Mama. that that makes me sad. You see where this has been shot into the ground? <laughs> it's trying to come back. It's trying to come back, but it's sawed off. Mm-hmm. It's been used as a fence post. Yeah. That's wild. It's just a stick. It's just a stick growing leaves. Now we're over here at the potato patches, or well, this was a potato patch. This one has been, what do you think, Sarah? Probably 99% harvested. 99.5. 99.5% harvested. I think there's one plant here at the very front, but otherwise these were the Yukon Gold potatoes. I believe I posted a picture, I know I did on our Facebook page, where these were harvested. Now over here is the other potato patch. And I know it looks super weedy, but this is ready to be harvested as well. And it goes down there quite a ways. This is where our Kennebec potatoes and Pontiac Reds are. So these will be harvested just any time now. All right, this area here we're calling the second garden. This is the first time we've used this plot of our land to actually grow things in. Um, I hope you can see this first row right here. This is all sunflowers, and it goes all the way back to the cow shed back there. That's about where 600 of them. she says there's about 600 of them. We had lots of sunflower seeds. We said just just plant a bunch and we'll see what happens. So we are hoping that we will be able to harvest seeds to use for animal feed for this winter. But it goes all the way back there down to the cow shed. That's where we milk Daisy the cow every morning. These other rows have corn at various stages there. And more is to be planted in this empty space over here as we're able to get the fabric down. There was a delay in shipping, so we had to wait to get the fabric, but it has finally come in. And Sarah, you're wanting to plant more popcorn, right? Yes, a lot yeah. more pop popcorn. Popcorn in that space. Is it bright and sunshiny today? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, are we going to the big garden now? Yep. I think. Let's go on to the main garden. All right, we're now in the main garden. This is what we call the main garden of the property. The showstoppers in here right now are the sunflowers. You can see them up there. We have several different varieties, and they have all blossomed. These were volunteers, so... They came up early, they came up on their own, and look at that beauty over there. I'll show you that one closer up when we get to that side of the garden, but those are my favorites right now. <laughs> okay, Sarah, we always start off, I think, at the towers, and we just look at the strawberry plants. Um, we started these brand new this year, a brand new patch, so we have not really harvested anything off the strawberries. You have a little bit of greens in there. A little, little bit still hasn't vaulted. Yeah, a little bit of greens there. There are more salad greens in here mixed in amongst the strawberries. So that's what that is. And then I know you've got some herbs in here too. Yes. The a chives. Lot, a lot are trying to bolt. Yeah. Chives. Rosemary. Let's see. Oh, what is this? That was parsley. Parsley, yeah. It's uh, it's doing its thing, isn't it? And this is lavender, right? Yes. Okay. I know you've got some pretty flowers in here. Sarah loves her flowers. Am I missing any of the herbs, Sarah? I don't think any of the herbs. Okay. Well, let's move on to the tomato plants, I think. All right, Sarah. She has all of her tomato plants right in this whole area here. All the way from that little shed back behind Sarah all the way forward here and Sarah how many plants did you say you had 38 38 plants and I know you've got some of them over here that already have little tomatoes growing on them 
Do you know what variety this one is? I'm not sure. Everything was all shuffled around, so I have no clue what's what. <laughs> Everything was shoveled around? Okay, Sarah's going to grab Rebecca. I do know we're growing fewer tomato plants than what we did last year. Last year we dealt with, it looked like grazon uh, poisoning, I guess is what it was, where the leaves and such started to actually die off. So, so far everything looks good this year, but we are wondering if that is going to happen again to us this year or not. If you've watched our past videos, you will know that we use feed sacks, we use newspaper, we use <laughs> cardboard boxes, whatever we can to mulch in between the rows. It just saves some money and it works. So that's what we use. All right, you see this tunnel here in front of me that is made up of just T posts and cattle panel arbors and or T posts and cattle panels to form the arbor and this is our cucumber arbor so there are cucumbers growing up there well, right next to Sarah growing up the cattle panel there and then of course you can see the volunteer sunflowers this was our sunflower patch last year and then down the middle right in the middle of that arbor there are some squash so Sarah you said you've got little baby cucumbers Let's see. So that's where we're at with cucumbers right now. You are bringing in squash though. Yes, a few. There's a few. And what are your pretty orange flowers down Those here? Those are my nasturtiums. This is nasturtiums. my first year getting them to work. You said nasturtiums. Okay. Yes. Let's come on down here. Oh, you've got, this. okay, here's some pretty ones. All right, there. Now, why did you plant nasturtiums here? Okay, so um, there, I believe, okay, so they're supposed to aid the cucumber with a cucumber beetle, and I believe they're supposed to help with squash bugs, but that's not seeming to be something that's working, mm -hmm. so. Because we are battling yeah. squash bugs. And the pretty, pretty sunflowers. All right, this whole patch here all the way there to the end where that other arbor cattle panel arbor is this is all sweet potatoes so and this will spread and this will get bigger to where you can probably not even see the dirt anymore oh, by the definitely <laughs> by the time they get big enough so and sarah do you want to explain what that is <laughs> that jungle so these are my volunteer melons I just found out what kind they were. They're tigger melons. Well, I have one that looks like a hearts of gold cantaloupe, but the majority of them look like tigger me melons, if you want to see what I mean. Oh, oh, okay. This, yeah, let me get in there. Yeah. See how it's all striped? That's this dark is eventually going to come orange and this green here is going to become like a, ye a yellowish and it's going to be striped just just like Tigger in the Winnie the Pooh um, books and, see and, and series and it's really cute. Tigger striped. Now we have one in the house that you've already harvested. Yes, it's probably about, so, it's probably smaller than, than my here, hand. We'll, we'll insert a uh, little picture or video of it here so they can see what one looks like right. Yes. So, but we're expecting more because... Um, there's lots of volunteers oh, yes. <laughs> and they came up in the compost pile and a sunflower and a sunflower right there so yeah volunteers are great so all right peppers this whole whole row right here is peppers and we are getting peppers brought in on just about a daily basis now let's see yeah and there's one down there and over there so they're doing good I did want to show you we noticed on one of the sweet potato plants here starting to flower so they do have pretty oh, light purple lavender flowers on there just wanted to show you that okay got a pot here with some more strawberries um, I do notice they're trying to put off little runners 
right now to make some extra little plants so that'll be nice and some onions mixed in there as well okay this other arbor this is our second cattle panel arbor here in the garden and this one is for beans right Sarah yep. okay now this end we're at now are the smaller ones these are the ones that you planted last yes. so you can see all the little bean plants down there and as we go further down they're going to get bigger so and you've got your little tags down there old homestead where, where are they there. at there it is <laughs> i can see old homestead yeah she's got little tags so anyway all these little plants there should be a total of about 200. Yep. oh here sorry guys i know there's a shadow oh i'm sorry <laughs> yeah Okay. Failed here, you tried to transplant those and it didn't work. One of these, well, no, two of them stayed. This one was original. Oh wait, this one's. It's coming it, back too. Okay, I'm not gonna give up on them just okay. yet. Okay. Why did you transplant these? They were growing in my watermelon patch. <laughs> okay. Yeah, they don't need to be in the watermelon patch. Okay. So why do? What does this look different? Because these are bigger. Oh, this. Yes. Because it's a weed. All right, that's why it looks different. You have so many different types of beans in here that it's hard for me to know what's what. What's what? Because you have drying beans, like you said, the succotash beans. beans. Okay, yeah, show me those. So we are not picking those. No. We are gonna wait and let those grow big and plump. Yeah, I've got a lot of the sug and the succotash. Those will be dried beans for us. Yes. But we're already harvesting green beans. I know you've already brought those in for the day, These are but the green beans. yeah, there's a little one. So we have little ones growing there. Do you have any of those purple green beans? Those are back here. Okay. I know you've already brought them all in today. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So there's one. So we're getting beans in, and then we'll go down here to. I know the garlic looks awful, but that's because. We need to harvest it all. We've already harvested the garlic scapes, and now the garlic needs to come out of the ground. All right, let's see how we did. Now, this was garlic that we planted from garlic that we grew last year. So, this was the first year we did not have to buy garlic to plant. Okay, so Sarah's going to pull some. Look, we already pulled those out, and look, look how pretty they are. This is our hardneck garlic, and again, this is from garlic that we grew last year. We saved our own seed, so we didn't have to buy any for the first time ever. Planted it, and it looks good. Here's the hardneck she pulled up over here. Here, this right here is some of the soft neck. That she just pulled up so I'm excited we are gonna harvest and see how much we ended up getting that makes me happy Sarah <laughs> yay I know it doesn't look pretty you guys but there is food under all that mess there okay we're over here by the pretty sunflower too let me go ahead we haven't even counted how many flowers are on this and again this was a volunteer look at all the bees it's just beautiful this makes me so happy here beautiful flowers yeah and there's more I mean there's more that are not even bloomed yet on here how can you see that and not smile okay we're gonna move on to the next thing now Sarah right yep all right, now we're at the basil patch, and I'm telling you guys, it looks so pretty over here. I don't even know, Sarah, do you know how many different types of basil you have? Four. Four different types. This one is the biggest right here. Yes. I like that one. And you guys, it smells so good. This, this oh. is the Italian basil. It always is the best here. And you said basil likes it dry. And I think so. that's a perfect conditions right now. <laughs> what other types? This is a purple this is okay I know I have Persian uh, Cardinal and one other one 
but I get confused. I know Cardinal's one of these. I want to say this is the Persian okay. basil. Don't quote me on that. Okay. I'm not sure. Okay. So, but yeah, so many different types. We have a really good baked oh, salmon. Here. I've got this here. These are Cardinal. Car those smaller so ones are Persian. Cardinal basil. Purple is Persian basil. Did I you? forget what these are. All right. But no, we have a salmon pesto, a pesto salmon dish that we like. So we are going to harvest some basil, make up some pesto, and have a really, really delicious salmon dish that the family enjoys. <laughs> so you looking forward to that? Okay. Have you noticed I love my basil? She loves her basil. Makes you happy? If I could have a garden of just basil and sunflowers, I think my life would be just heaven. <laughs> basil and sunflowers. What else do you need, huh? <laughs> All right, and your plants here, you've showed these, shown these in previous month's uh, garden tours, and you are going to be harvesting seed from these, and it looks like... I've got pretty much everything off. Yep. The kale seed here has been harvested. Now, there is a secondary kale plant right down here that is just fresh and can be used for eating right now. So these two are so close together, one has gone to seed and the other one right next to it we can still eat off of. This is still forming seed pods on this one and this one over here. So no longer eating off these kale plants there, but we are still going to get something off of them. Okay, I think we're going to move on, Sarah, to this patch here behind you next. Okay, now we're over here at the melon patch. And you guys may look at this and think this just looks like a weedy mess. But I'm telling you, things are going to grow here. If you take away nothing else from this video, just know that your garden does not have to look Pinterest perfect. It can have weeds and cardboard newspaper trash in it. And it can produce food for you. If nothing else, remember that. So... Okay, Sarah, what did you say? You told me these two first two rows right here. Both of these here are cantaloupes and just regular melons, like a, there's a mush melon in here. There's one more plant of the ticker melons, and then uh, just some, and then there's a lot of cantaloupes in there. And then all of that right there, is all my watermelons. I've got orange yep. watermelon, yellow watermelon, red so, watermelon. That row there. This row here. This row here with the sunflower in it. Yep. That's and not a sweet potato. We oh, found that this morning. This is where our sweet potato patch was last year. So, whoopsie. Somebody forgot something. Yes. <laughs> And then another watermelon row yes. right here. And those at the very end are volunteers, so I don't know what those are going to be. Surprise! We do love volunteers. So, we'll see what we end up with off this one. Maybe we'll know something better by next month's. <laughs> next month's garden tour video. Hopefully. <laughs> okay, you guys may not believe this, but this whole grown-up area over here, Sarah's eating. Sarah, what are you eating? Blackberries. Blackberries. This is all blackberries. So my thornless blackberries are not doing the greatest, but the wild thorny ones, you guys, <laughs> we have so many blackberries. I hope you can see those. They are everywhere through here. And they continue on. on and on and there are thorns up oh, I'm caught on thorns there are thorns but there are delicious and they are good we have been Sarah's eating them <laughs> there are so many of them so we are bringing in blackberries on a daily basis now oh yes well the ones that aren't eaten by us kids the ones that aren't eaten straight outside actually make it inside the house so Again, it's a mess over here, but there is food growing amongst the mess. So, it doesn't have to be pretty pretty. <laughs> Got all the ducks over here by the watering cans. Watch them. See them sticking their heads down in there. 
anything to get to that water. You goofy ducks. All right. And over here on the other side are our new ducks. I showed you those on the community page yesterday. This is Thelma and Louise, and they're new here. They're still getting used to being out here amongst the rest of the flock. We've got the towers here with the onions growing in them. All kinds of onions here. These are green stalk towers. And Sarah, you said this is butterfly bush here, right? Yes. With those orange flowers there. The butterflies love it. Another green stalk here with more onions. Okay, now Sarah, this plant here, is this an edible? Is this something you planted or what's the deal? I actually don't know what this is. Um, when I saw it's arrowhead shaped leaves, I thought it was like, um, okay, it's called different names depending on where you are here in the U.S. It can be called wapato, duck potato, arrowhead, or Katniss, actually, which I thought was really, really cool. I mean, it, yeah. So, but that's not actually what it is. So, I'm kind of stumped now since that was my only guess. So, if you guys know or have any ideas, I'd love, I'd love to know it. Can, can, can I eat it? Is it poisonous? Oh, no. All right. It if likes, you know. It likes growing with onions. Likes, we know that. It likes onions. If you know, leave it in the comments for us. Oh, we're going to take a little peek here. Got our little baby ducks. These are the ones that hatched out in our incubator. And we have a whole video on that. We'll probably link that in the description box, too. They're getting big enough to move around in the chicken tractor out in the yard. And then I've got some noisy ducks over here. They're swimming. <laughs> I tell you, you guys ought to get ducks. I get so much enjoyment just out of watching these ducks play around. They're a lot of good fun. Can you, oh, where'd it go? There's a skink. Let me see. Can we see the skink? Oh, it's it's going up the little wall there. Did you see the little skink? The little lizard, you guys? Where'd it go? It's peeking. Well. Alright, Sarah. Pretty flowers. This is my domain. I took this over several years ago, and Mama has not had possession of it since. <laughs> it's mine. It's it's all yours. I planted, uh, well, I had Mama buy zinnias the first year. I took it over, and they've come back year after year. Only the pink ones came back, though. So I have light pink and dark pink zinnias. But then this year I decided I'd plant white ones. And then a new kind that I got from ba from Baker Creek, a uh, Queen Lime Blush. And they're very, very cool. I see some chamomile mixed in here too still. Oh, yes. So, and that chamomile comes back year after year also. Yes. This is my blush one. That's the new one? Yes. It's got like a pinkish orange with the lime green. It's so pretty. And all your pink zinnias now. And that doesn't look like a zinnia. It's What's a that? tomato. Volun it was my volunteer. Volunteer tomato amongst the zinnias. It looks and like the it, chamomile. Yep. It looks like it's a sunrise bum, 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 bumblebee one, which is my favorite type of cherry tomato. I love it. All right, we're going to have Rebecca over here. Eating my tomatoes? Oh, yeah, she could reach them. If oh, she no. can reach them, they're fair game. This one's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like that one. I think it's called a polar bear. Polar bear zinnia? Mm-hmm. Okay, are these going to seed? Yep. So they, I liked these because they were such a bold blue when they were, you know, perfectly bloomed out. So, yeah, we're definitely going to collect seeds for this because it was gorgeous. And you just planted some more, <laughs> didn't you? And here's another zinnia. They're just so pretty. And a few echinacea over here. Our echinacea is not doing well this year. We actually lost some that had been growing for many years. But these over here are just starting to bloom. 
What is this right here, Sarah? That's yarrow. With a pretty purple flowers. Yep. I got a mix from Baker Creek and okay. I decided, hey, I'm going to try pink and purple and yellow, all the colors of yarrow. And, and this is what came. That's what came. Now here in the back, if you can see these stalks here and the ferns, that's more asparagus growing right in here. Don't know why it's growing here, but it does every year. So a little bit of asparagus here in Sarah's flower patch. All right, over in this area, we have one last orchard with three apple trees in it. And I hope you can see it is doing very well. Lots and lots and lots of apples. You can see if you can see up there high, there are just apples everywhere this year. So the first two trees here are the same variety. I have no clue what that variety is because these trees were here when we bought the property 13 years ago. But I hope these are jumping out at you guys. There's a bunch. <laughs> and this third tree here on the end is actually a different variety. Again, don't know what it is, but the apples look obviously different. They have more of a pinkish purple hue to them. And these ones taste sweeter. These are sweeter, you say? Yes. I very rarely actually get any of these inside my house because as soon as they start getting ripe, the chickens and the children eat them all. So, I don't know. There's so many this year. Maybe I will make some into uh, applesauce. Maybe just a few. Maybe just a few. <laughs> okay, we're going to head back to show you just... Uh, I think maybe one or two more things. I wanted to show you the ground here, guys. This is how dry it is here. We have not gotten rain, and we are taking care to water the garden and take care of the animals, but just the yard, I mean, it's cracking. It's, we're dry. <laughs> Pray for rain, guys. Okay, over here, I wanted to show you my lemon balm plant. And again, this comes back every single year, makes a delicious tea. Sarah, is there anything else in here? Um, I know you have flowers. Yeah, snapdragon, the soft flower is dying off. Yeah. I'm not sure why. Well, we've got some things trying to go to seed as well. We've got calen calendula can and chamomile. Calendula back here, chamomile yeah. up there, and it's going too. Yeah. I've got whorehound in this pot. Yeah, I know the whorehound. We use this medicinally. So, and it comes back every year also. It even made it through the super cold negative five degrees that we oh, got yeah. this last winter. So it did well. So these are just the few things we have in pots here in front of the house. And the last thing are your little seedlings that still need to go out. And then I think we're done. Okay. Last stop, Sarah. The things that... Have they gotten forgotten? No, I just, I've been so busy. <laughs> just the last things to make it to the ground. Okay, let's go over real quick. What do you have here? I've got, uh, oh, what's it called? Oh, oh, elderberry. <laughs> Noisy ducks. <laughs> well, just one duck. Noisy duck. <laughs> They're so happy. Yes, but, but it's happy, so... And you're noisy. Okay. I've got some walking uh, onions. The ducks and chickens had toured them up. Yes. So I stuck they, them into some ground. They sat in the middle of yes. my walking onions and destroyed them. So we salvaged what we could, put them in the dirt, and okay. Stuck so not a total loss. Yes. All right. I've got some basil here as well. We needed more basil. I know. Oh, you can't have too much, right? More el more elderberry coming up here. This is all mul mullion in the back. Mm -hmm. It's so soft, you guys. It's beautiful. And then I've got my bee balm here. So I need to get this into the ground. Okay, is that and, what all of this is? Well, kind of. This is phlox okay. here. And this is one little echinacea. Okay. And that's good since our others didn't do well. Yep. All right. They'll be in the ground soon. All right, guys. That's it for the month of June. That's our big homestead. What's growing on the homestead garden tour? And I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please be sure to give us a thumbs up. 
and subscribe if you have not already. And be sure to tell your family and friends to watch Ozark Family Homestead so it can help our channel grow. Thanks so much, you guys. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching Ozark.